Hey guys, it's Jason with Orchids Limited or OrchidWeb.com. Um, I'm here today to talk about an anomaly happening here at Orchids Limited this year. Uh, in the summer of 2019, we've got two Amorphophallus titanum, also known as the corpse flower, getting ready to bloom. Typically, when these plants are not flowering, they are dormant or in a vegetative state. So what they have in the base is a large corm, like a big potato that stores energy. And after a dormant rest, they send up this large flower bud. The first signs of the flower bud on this particular plant were on uh, May 1st, 2019. So it's been just over two months. There are three simple parts to this flower. We've got the bract, which is a protective covering with the turn brown and kind of fall over as the flower unravels. We've got the spave, which is the section that surrounds the spadix, which will fan and open out and has a really dark red center to it. Um, this plant is called the corpse flower because it stinks. It smells like rotten meat. On average, there's a four hour peak of the flower in bloom with maximum fragrance. And then it starts to die back after that. The whole experience of watching it open to watching it closing is about 48 hours. So you've got a couple days to, uh, to view it. Uh, they smell so bad because they're trying to attract flies quickly to pollinate the flower. Uh, we're going to be showing you how to pollinate this once it's open. Uh, you have a very small window of opportunity to pollinate the flower. So the first day it's open is the day you pollinate it. Typically people cut a square in the flower and then apply the pollen uh, to the female receptors during that time. Uh, the, the pollen the plant produces comes out the second day when it stops accepting pollen. So these don't self-pollinate in the wild. You have to have pollen prepared ahead of time. Uh, I stored some from the last time it flowered, so we're gonna be able to, to pollinate it this year. And then we'll collect pollen from this one to use on this uh, smaller, younger plant here. I believe actually these are the same age. Genetically, this one is just a, a bigger, better grower, has a larger container that might've contributed to it, to it growing faster and better. The Amorphophallus titanum is the world's largest inflorescence or a cluster of flowers. There's a massive cluster of flowers around the base uh, attached to the spadix, which you really can't see unless you're standing on a ladder looking down or you cut a hole right here on the side to, to view it. The largest singular flower in the world is the Rafflesia arnoldii. Uh, but both flowers are extremely impressive when they're blooming and um, if uh, any botanical garden has announced something like this in bloom, typically you'll see you know, hundreds, even thousands of people uh, lining up just to observe them. This spadix here is going to get several feet taller before it opens. Uh, we've never had one with this uh, wide of a spadix, so I think it's going to be a good show. I believe this is the third time this has flowered. I was told that we originally obtained these corms back in 1999. So next up, we'll come back when the flower is open and we'll show you how the pollination process takes place. Okay, so here it is. Um, they're now getting close to opening. The smaller one has dropped a couple sheets. There's still one more to go over there. <clears throat> Some dropped in both. And then there is, uh, it has grown now to 78 inches tall from the soil here. And that grew uh, about five inches overnight, so that's pretty pretty fast. And it still doesn't look like it's going to open for a while yet. We thought it would be tonight, but it's as you can see around on this side, it's starting to turn purple here, and then the entire inside of the, this part of the flower has to turn purple before it opens. So I. It's really hard to guess exactly when these bloom, but um, you know, because we only see them once every three years. So, it, it, but I think it should be within the next day or two. So here we are, uh, nine days after we shot the first video with the Amorphophallus titanum. Uh, it's hotter than blazes in here today. It's probably in the high 80s, very humid, uh, which is what these flowers love to crack open. And this morning. Uh, you could tell it was going to open because around the edge of the flower there were flies uh, all over the place. And you can see right now there's flies uh, flying around the top of the spadix. Right now this flower seems to be opening at about 5 plus inches an hour. So at 4.15 p.m. 
Uh, I believe this thing will be in full bloom probably anywhere between 8 and 10 p.m. Uh, our sibling plant here is a little behind uh, the other the other one and I think it's probably got two to three more days before it opens up. Uh, just kind of comparing the stages they've both gone through. It would have been nice to have them open at the same time, but uh, the timing just didn't work out to have that happen. So now the titanium is in full bloom and the female flowers are ready to accept pollen. So what we're going to do is cut a section of the spave out so we can access the female flowers and then we're going to apply the pollen which we stored from three years ago uh, with a paintbrush. So let's hope, uh, let's hope we don't make any bad cuts here. And typically people cut out a rectangular box to access the flowers. The male flowers will be active tomorrow, putting out the pollen, and then I'll come back and harvest that pollen to save it for a future date or to cross it with the, the other one we have that's about to flower as well. Okay, it's getting close. It's kind of like uh, the consistency of a pumpkin, but much, much weaker. I will cut a section out here so I can have access to it a little better. Okay, there we go. Now you can see the, the female receptors of the flower. And they're waiting to have the pollen brushed onto them. So I'm going to take a, a paintbrush here. And you can see the pollen is fine, just like yellow dust. And then I'm just going to spread it over these female receptors. And we'll do that a few times. And I'll probably just blow the rest of it in from the top to see if uh, we can get any other random flowers to, to pollinate. Actually, what I'm going to do is use an extended stick. Oh, there's a beetle. Cool. So typically beetles and flies are what find these flowers to pollinate them in the wild. And that's funny, that one just crawled out that exit while we were working on this to, uh, to see what we're doing. We're going to take this paintbrush now and I'm going to apply some more pollen to it. And I'm just going to go the extra mile here and try to get uh, more fertilization from the other flowers because I can access it like this and just brush it on. So most places that do it cut a hole in the wall of the flower, but technically if you wanted to preserve the flower and not damage it at all, you could do the entire flower this way. Uh, if the successful ones will set, they will form uh, green fruits. Actually, the entire uh, structure will form fruits, but only some of them will be fertile. But if you don't do the pollination, the entire structure will rot shortly after the blooming is over with. So uh, this way it stimulates the entire flower to produce fruits, but only X amount of them will actually have fertile seed in them. And it takes an entire year for the seed to ripen and when they're bright orange and red, it's when the uh, hornbills in the wild are attracted to them. Then they will come eat them, extract them, and wherever they land, hopefully they will, uh, they will grow. And that's the entire process of pollinating an amorphophallus titanium. That's cool. <laughs> I didn't even realize they were so translucent. translucent. So four days later we had our second titanium flower. Um, actually in the middle of the evening, typically they start to crack open by late morning, early afternoon and we know it's going to flower that day. Uh, but this, we came in this morning on Tuesday morning and it was already slowly starting to close, uh, but still strong in scent which means it should still be receiving pollen. So we pollinated it. The spade on this one was a little more tight, so I couldn't access uh, the female receptors from the top. So what I had to do is cut a square open on each side of the flower, uh, of the spade to access all of the female flowers. And so with this brush here, I applied pollen uh, all around the, the female flowers. You can see above the female flowers, the 
male <clears throat> pollen capsules and by probably by this evening to tomorrow morning they extract little strings of pollen and then I'll come in and harvest them and have them in storage for future hybridization with other amorphophallus because I'm interested in making hybrids with the titanium uh, that potentially have not been made before. So uh, that wraps up the, uh, the flowering for this year and we'll probably won't see these flower again until the year 2023. So we'll see you then.